Okay guys, so moving on, we've built our custom kit by loading up samples into our blank template kit that I showed you how to create, right? Now I said at the end of that bit that in the next video we'll look at customising the stack in the mixer for our custom kit, but there's something I want to look at first. The blank template kit that you create, that I showed you how to create, you obviously have to use a factory kit as your starting point. Then you open the Ultrabeat, you create that initialised sample voice, you vanilla it, and then you copy it to all the other Ultrabeat voice slots, and then you title up the Ultrabeat voice slots with the basic kit titles, and everything else you title as vanilla perk, right? Then you uh, rename your pads to vanilla titles and do the fix to get the length control for the two kicks, and that's it, right? But you have to start with a factory kit to get that vanilla template blank empty kit. And you should always use the drum machine drum machine designer after party as your starting factory kit to make the blank template kit. And the reason for that is that the after party, all the ultra bit outs for the after party, there's nothing wacky, there's no wacky effects. Okay? Don't use one of the dubstep kits as a starting point because the dubstep kits, the ultra bit outputs often have wacky effects on. So we use the after party as our starting point to make our blank empty template kit. We vanilla all the ultra bit voices, we do all the things I showed you, and we end up with the template kit. And then when we populate it with our own samples, it means that each voice, it's just got standard effects on the output and the standard kind of controls. Every voice has pitch and length, then you'll have the enveloper, a lot of the voices will have the spreader, you might have the crusher or the distortion, um, and you'll either have the general tone control or you'll have the bass and the presence control for the EQ and volume and pan. Nothing crazy, right? Because when we made our blank template kit from the preferably after party, we change everything in the ultra bit, we vanilla all the voices, we retitle all the pads, but we don't do anything to the effects on the ultra bit outputs in, in, in the stack for that. Um, template blank kit, right? So these are still the same effects on all the ultra bit outs as the after party we used as the starting point and all the smart controls are controlling those effects for each voice, right? Nothing crazy. Then you use that template kit, load up your custom samples and do all the things I showed you to make a custom kit, but when you finish doing that you, you might say to yourself, well look, I want to change some of the effects on some of the outputs for my new custom kit, which means you'll need to change the smart controls to control the new effects for the um, plugin effects you've replaced, right? Now, further back in, in this Drum Machine Designer tutorial series, I told you that you can edit these smart controls in place when the voice is already loaded into Drum Machine Designer. But at that point, I said, first, we need to learn how to build a custom voice patch completely from scratch, including the the, doing the smart controls because if we learn that when we learn how to edit the smart controls in place it'll be easier that's what I want to look at now you've built your custom kit from the blank template and now you say I want to change some of the effects on the output for some of the voices which means changing the smart controls as well in place with the voice already loaded into drum machine designer so let's look at that um, so let's say with the click here you select the click pad, remember on the right of the inspector column there's the ultra beat output channel, a copy of the one in the stack for the ultra beat voice connected to the pad. And it's got a bit crusher on it. And there's the crush control and the smart controls for the pad controlling that bit crusher. Now I want to remove the bit crusher and re replace it with a different effect. And then this crush control, I want it to control the new effect. And we want to do all that in place with the voice already loaded. Sure, what we do is we right click on the pad and we create a track for the pad. That creates a track for the pad, which basically creates a track for the ultra beat output for the ultra beat voice connected to the pad, right? But here's the thing if you create a track for the kick one, the very first kick, the kick one is always connected to the ultra beat voice 
which uses the main ultra bit output 1, 2 in the stack with the instrument on. So if you create, right click and create a track for the kick, it creates under this main drum machine sonar channel uh, track here, it creates a, just a kick track that has the instrument on. But if you right click and create a track for any other pad and which an ultra bit voice other than the kick, it creates a track for the kick and the track for the pad and its ultra bit voice that you've created a track for. It has to create a track for the kick because the kick has the ultra bit on and all the other pads are connected to ultra bit voices using one of the ultra beats separate out. So there has to be a reference ultra bit track and then the track for the voice using one of the separate outs. So if I right click and create a track for the click, it creates a kick track and a track for the click. Like that, okay. Now, when you have the drum machine designer track selected and you select a pad, the output channel for the ultra beat voice connected to the pad appears on the right of the inspector column here. But when you select the track for that ultra beat voice, the ultra beat channel jumps to the left. So if I click, I select the click track, this is the channel for the click track, it will jump to the left. Well, it's there now. Okay. okay. Now that the click ultra beat output has its own track, we can bring in the smart controls and we can edit them. These the same smart controls as on the drum machine designer for this voice, right? But here they can be edited. Because the click has its own track, now we have access to smart controls here for that track and pad, and they can be edited. Okay, show. Here's the channel for the click and its track. There's the bit crusher. I'm going to remove it and replace it instead with a silver verb, which is a, a, a basic reverb that doesn't use much CPU power. Boom. So I've replaced the bit crusher for a silver verb. As soon as I do that, the crush control connected to the bit crusher becomes unmapped because the bit crusher has been taken away. Now we want this smart control to control the mix amount from no reverb or to full reverb for the silver verb. Right. So we just latch learn, move the mix control for the silver verb and it's learned. There it is, mix. Now it's there in the edit down here, but it hasn't appeared on the copy of the smart control panel on the drum machine designer yet. But it will as soon as we click on this title here on the editor, mix. Now it appears there. I'm going to retitle this reverb. Well, done. And this controls the reverb. Let's compact the stack. Close the editor. Select the click. This controls the reverb amount. Full reverb. No reverb. Okay. Let's go back to our edit for the click. Okay, um, I'm going to open that silver verb. I'm going to just choose a different preset, gate of reverb too. Okay. Okay, so that's it. We've done it. But what we want to have is that thing where when we turn the smart control completely down, it turns the silver verb off. Okay, which it currently doesn't do. Now the silver verb is the second insert effect on the output channel for the click. So with the reverb uh, control selected, go to the mapping here and we add mapping. The silver verb is the second insert on the channel. Select that unmap slot, drop the list down, main, insert to bypass, boom, which is the bypass for the silver verb. Open the scaling, turn off step. We looked at this before, we have this incorrect scaling. We need to replace that with the correct scaling to turn the plugin off at the bottom of the travel of the pot. We choose the spread control. This is connected to the stereo delay here on the output. And when we turn it up, it turns the stereo delay on. This has the correct scaling. There's the parameter, bypass for the stereo delay. Open the scaling, there's the correct scaling. Copy that scaling. Go to our reverb, choose the bypass for the silver verb, open the scaling, and paste in the correct scaling. Boom. Done. And now this reverb control turns 
the silver verb off at the very bottom of its travel. Turn it up, it turns the silver verb on and increases the amount of mix of reverb. Done. Okay. Turn the edit off. Turn off smart controls. Compact the stack. Close drum machine designer and save. Save. I'm going to actually call this DMD7072, so I have one with the reverb on the click and one without. Save. Bob. Okay, now let's go drum machine. Drum machine designer after party, load the factory after party. Go back, use the patches, DMD7072. There it is. And there's the click, and it's got the reverb. Okay, so that's how you edit smart controls in place when you want to change effects on some of the outputs for some of the voices in your custom kit you've just built. It's really easy to edit in place. Okay.